at all. Not so long ago, I was modeling cookie cutters in OpenSCAD, and that brought up the need to use Bezier curves. Previously, I had thought that Bezier curves would be something damn complicated mathematical, but as I figured it out now, I saw that, yes, it's mathematical, but I have done much more complicated mathematical things in the past, and it's not something to be afraid of. And since I was unsatisfied with the Bezier curves code I found online, I decided to write my own and share it with you. This video will have two parts, in, or I will make this video <laughs> now, where I explain Bezier curves, and there will be a second video where I model a cookie cutter, so you can see the code more in action. A typical use case for Bezier curves is typography. Here's a letter D and the points that define it. When you describe a letter in a typography tool, um, you also use Bezier curves and those points. So the process is actually fairly similar, except uh, without code. Let's take a brief look at the file. First of all, in mathematics, you can have a curve that is continuous, but in 3D modeling, you need to approximate it. So your curve is always made of very little lines that, um, that are connected. And this first variable, fs, um, says how big those lines are. So if we, um, if we just change it, make it much larger, then we get... Um, a much more angular letter, D. Um, yes. This is very useful because you want to make it fine-grained later and uh, not waste so much time on rendering while, while you develop. Um, then you have the points that um, define the thing. And then there's some code that displays the points uh, for teaching value. And then there are modules and um, that build the curve, which is the actual code. We will look into this later. Uh, then I've made um, two polygons, um, one that is the outside uh, shape of the D and one that is the curve thing and then it's just a difference operation. So that's, that's how I made this one. Let's just change a point because why not? Um, I don't know. How about this one? Um, it should be this point here and I make it four. It's so three. Yeah. Yes, so that's how we can change the curves um, by moving around the points. Let's look into the theory now. You've already seen that PC curves get described by points and an algorithm. And in most cases, you will use four points. This is the most useful thing to do. Uh, but it can be two or more points. In the very unuseful case of two points, um, it can work as described in this code. You have two points, P1 and P2, and then there's a variable n that says how many um, of those uh, steps do we want to have? And then for a counter variable between 0 and 1 that has n steps, um, it translates uh, point one and uh, no, it adds <laughs> um, point one times the counter variable and point two times one minus the counter variable. Um, and that's what we see here. It's a straight line of um, spheres. We can just move one of the points and see what it does. Yeah, it, yeah. This is indeed not very useful, but we get to the thing now. Um, and this is, we can, we can make a second 
a curve like that between point two and point three. I just kind of copy paste it and exchange the points point two and point three. There we go. Um, and now here's how to make the curve. You have um, points between the points and you will use those to draw more points to make a curve. Um, and this works in a way that we kind of copy those things into each other. I just copy a little bit so I have to type less. Um, we use this and multiply it. Oh, wrong. And multiply it the counter and then we use that times i minus the counter. I hope I've done it right. No. What is the problem? Ah there was no times. So, let's see, haha, -ha, there we go. We have a curve, which basically is like, like this point is between this point and that point, and the next point is between that point and that point. Oh, you can see the cursor. Damn it. However, um, those, those points in the, in the third, uh, let's just dye it green. Are located between the other points that we've already calculated. And if you have higher order busy curves, it actually works like that. It's always points between points, at least if you approximate it with points, which you do um, in 3D modeling, unlike in mathematics. After this simple example, let's look into some uh, production code. So, this um, function calculates how many steps there will be, depending on the first and the last point given, and fs. And then there are two functions. I've split the BCD curve thing in two functions, because this one will work the same regardless of what I'm doing with the BCD curve, and the second one differs depending on what, what I want. Okay, what, whether it's a letter or a cookie cutter, for instance, or whatever. Um, so, this function is given a number of points um, in an array, and then two numbers, which is how many points will there be calculated, and which of those points is it. And then it asks, are there more than two points? And if that is the case, um, it will call itself yeah, with um, either from the first point until the second last point and, adds, um, and multiplies it with the index thing um, and adds that to um, calling itself from the second point until the last point. Um, times uh, 1 minus index. And uh, once uh, you've broken it down to two points, it does uh, what we had in a simple example. Um, to add one point with the index uh, plus the other point with 1 minus the index. Um, and then the second functions, uh, function which differs depending on what is going on. Um, it is basically calling all the points. So first it uh, calculates fn, um, so it calls the fn function and uh, calculates an internal variable and then from zero until the uh, variable it calls each point um, and uh, concatenates them. 
This is the process uh, that I've used in the letter, obviously, because I need like all the points um, in order to make the polygon. Um, it will happen differently depending on what else uh, it's, it's going to do um, in other models. After explaining the theory, I want to talk about two more details. One of which is it does work three-dimensionally as well. So here is the inside of the D shape made as a rainbow and um, it has a Z value added, like here. The points have a Z value. And when I move it in place, there's the, it is flat now because uh, all the Z values are zero. And if I change one, let's make this two, it pulls the curve up in this place because this uh, point has changed position. So uh, not sure whether three-dimensional Bezier curves are uh, useful for anything at all, but uh, theoretically it works. And of course it's much nicer if I move the second next point down. Uh, no, minus two. So now it actually works well together. And another extra thing that I want to talk about is placement of points. Here you have the outside shape of the letter D and the red dots are the starts and ends of the curves and the black dots are what makes the curve curvy. So, for instance, if you look at the right uh, side um, of the D-shape, like the very much outside right side. Um, this is the, the thing that gets defined by the four, first four points, point one, two, three, and four. And, and so on. So you see that there are um, several curves that this is made of. And one thing that you notice that at the round uh, part, the red dots are at the top and the bottom and the left side. So the round part is made of four curves. Um, this is something that I've learned in typography to place the uh, points like that because it makes a couple of things easier. Because what you want is you want a continuous curve at the top, bottom and left. Like if you have a round thing that you want to design, uh, like a roundish thing, you want a continuous curve. And um, you make your life easier if you place um, the points that way. Um, for the following reason, um, th those uh, let's look at the um, at the lower left side. Let's look at the lower left uh, curve of the D, like um, between the x-axis and the y-axis. That curve. You notice that the two other dots that shape the curve are also located on the x-axis and the y-axis. And what happens is that if you have like four, if you have a curve that is described by four points, it starts in the first point and it ends in the last point. And the curve, when it when it goes from the first to the second point, it starts going like first it starts going towards the second point and then it moves somewhere else. So um, you place the points on the same level. Um, if you look at the upper left side of the curve, you will notice that one of the other points is also located uh, on the y-axis. And the other one has an x value similar to the other end of the curve. So this is a, a principle that, that makes designing round curves um, easier. 
you can obviously place your point wherever you want, um, but in typography, that is how it is done, and it's actually very practical, even if you're not designing a letter. So place place your endpoints of your curve at the uh, like top, bottom, left and right, ultimate side of the shape. This is um, usually a good idea. And then the, one of the next points has the same x value and the other one has the same y value. Um, then then it's this, this makes your life a lot easier. Obviously, you can disobey this rule, but it makes your life a lot easier if, if you do it like that. So, this is the end of this video. I hope you liked it and you hope, I hope you learned something. Um, I will put a link to the files in the description box you, so you can uh, play around with them yourself. Um, soon I will make a second video where I demonstrate uh, those uh, busy curve things with an actual cookie cutter, which will be a cactus. So I will write a cactus cookie cutter for you. <laughs> so you can see those things in action and um, face real life problems, like where to face the points. So this is going to be next week or something. Um, see you soon. Bye.